Okay, I'm gonna disassemble the Luger for you now. This particular one out of my collection is a Kriegoff Luger. It's a 36 code Kriegoff, which are very rare. Only a small percentage of the Lugers that were made over the years, and we're talking about thousands and thousands of guns were Kriegoffs. One of the cool things about it, it's largely used by the German Fallschirmjägers, considered by many people as the toughest soldiers in World War II, and particularly on the German side, even tougher than the Waffen SS. Now, as far as the way the Luger is, whether it's a Mauser Luger or a Kriegoff or whatever, they were all precisely made hand-fitted guns. There was a lot of hand-fitting that went into them. The quality of the materials was superb. And that's why you can see, like, Mauser suspended production in 1942 and then picked up the P-38. Because as a combat weapon, by World War II, this gun was really starting to be long in the tooth. Let me show you how to break it down. Now. First thing, obviously, magazine out. Magazine releases on the side, so it comes out the bottom. Visually inspect the chamber, make sure the weapon's clear. You have a disassembly lever up here. You gotta pull it down slightly. Like that, actually I have to pull the barrel mechanism, the toggle mechanism back, and then the side plate comes off. Once you've done that now, the toggle, barrel and whatnot, the sliding recoiling parts of the gun per se come off. Now you have a pin here on the side, get my little tool here, push it out, lift it up, and she is field stripped for cleaning. Pretty simple design in a lot of ways. Remember when it was introduced, it was way ahead of its time, but once again by current standards when you look at guns like Glocks, and Berettas and whatnot, a very complex gun, a lot of precise machining and precise tolerancing and fitting. So, very cool gun, a lot of collector interest in the Luger. I happen to have a few and, and I'm a neophyte when it comes to collecting Lugers. By and large, the Luger is a piece of history. No one can afford to manufacture a handgun for combat use like this anymore. But there's two areas you need to dial in on when you think about the Luger. Number one is the cartridge. The 9mm Parabellum and a 9mm Luger it is as popular today as it's ever been, all started with this handgun. And number two, the grip frame angle. The grip frame angle has been carried over in large part to the Glock, which is the most popular service handgun in the world today. Most other ones mimic the grip frame angle of the 1911. The Glock is the notable one that mimics the Luger, or closely there to it. Great gun, and like I said, if you're a serious handgun enthusiast and you really dig World War II German handguns, you gotta have a Luger in the pile or you're missing the bus. Okay, again, next drill. Pistol Parabellum 08. We'll do a little build drill action here from the classic one-handed pistol technique of that era. Got it. Ammunition is Black Hills 9mm from our good friend Jeff Hoffman out of Black Hills. Great ammo. Yep, loaded. All right, on the signal. Stand by. All right, 4.1 seconds, all six hits. Yep, I had to one at the very top, but yeah. it still hit it. One eclipsed it, but uh, not bad. And I found myself doing a little bit of point shooting and had that front sight a little elevated in order to see the front sight. Bingo. But hence the shot that was a little high, but they're all on there, all six hits, and what was the time? 4.1. Okay. Let's paint them up. Up next, P38. Hey, thanks for watching the Vickers Tactical YouTube channel. To subscribe, click here. And to watch some of my favorite videos, click here. Have a good one. LAV out.